And welcome back to Church of Sports Now. Welcome into our interview se segment today. And some of you might recognize our guest. He's a member of the championship winning Sunbelt Conference men's basketball team, Juan Davis Jr. Juan, thanks for joining us today on the yeah, show. Nice. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. You're looking nice, looking nice. I had yeah. Jordan Bernardo on here about uh, earlier this, this semester in like February, and he just came in here in a, in a jumpsuit. But <laughs> you, you, rep you represent it looking real nice, man. Yeah, you know, it's just part of my personality. I heard I had an interview, so I was like, I don't need to come in here. That's not a regular t-shirt and jeans. So I just figured I, you know what I'm saying, put on a little something, not dress up, but, you know, put on a little bit of something. Yeah, and uh, Sunbelt Conference champions, I mean, that's, that's got a nice ring to it. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, it's, is it still unbelievable that, that what you guys were able to pull off there at the tournament? Of course, man. It's still surreal. Like, I wake up in the morning now, and I look at my wall because I have, like, souvenirs on the wall from the tournament. I'm like, did we really just win this championship? Did we really just go here, you know? But, I mean, it's been an unbelievable season. It was tough at the beginning, though, towards the middle, you know, but all we had to do was just persevere and keep focused on what we had to do because we knew what we had to do. And I feel like personally that if we didn't win the championship that – we had such a good team, it'd be like a, a season wasted, you know, and it would just would have been feeling so bad that we had wasted the season, but it's, it feels so good. You know, I think the only problem we have now is picking out which ring that we want to wear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's a nice problem to have to right. choose what kind of ring you want, but just the, the support that you guys gained over the, the course of the season, and I'm a senior, so I've been here for four years. I had the privilege of, or I, was, I saw basketball, the progression, I mean, of, of fans over the first three years, and I mean, it, it wasn't great. And then all of a sudden this year you guys pick up some traction, you guys get to the tournament, and then it's like, oh, they, they're in the tournament. And then right. it's like, oh, oh, they won the tournament. And then all of a sudden, like, like yeah. fans just come out of everywhere. I mean, what's it been like the support that you guys, you guys gained uh, from the moment you guys won the tournament or started to make your run to the point that you guys won the tournament and, and found out that y'all were playing Duke? Right, well, from the beginning of the season, Coach Cunningham, he told us, he said, I saw down in the room in the meeting, and he was like, I have did this for a long, long time, and the teams that I've been on, when we didn't have – good like past three seasons, but we finally got the pieces that we needed and that we felt like that we needed to have in order to have a good year. He said, that's what can happen in this room and we have a chance to really do something special this year. So that's what we did. And when the games came, you know, it wasn't a lot of fans that was there, but it was some. But, you know, I was like, if we keep winning, you know, we keep doing it, then we can bring the fans back out to the basketball game because the football team did so good this year. And so I was like, well, if we do good, then it'll bring them, it'll bring up Trojan, Troy, Univer Troy University Sports. And so when we did that and we won a tournament, we had like a lot of people you know, they're in New Orleans at the tournament, more than what I expected to see. And then when we went to Greenville, it was just amazing. I, we had a whole lot of people, and it really helped us in the case of momentum. And I think that's one of the reasons why we won, too. And then, uh, I mean, how much was it also, you had the women's basketball team, the women's basketball team, three straight 21 seasons, uh, they, they're picking up traction. So, I mean, does that push you guys saying, like, hey, you know, it's not just one side of basketball that's out here getting the Ws, you know, don't forget about the men. Yeah, I mean, it's – it gets to be a little jealousy, but I mean, that's good jealousy. You see the football team, they win, and so you're like, oh, yeah, we got to win, you know, because we're going to be put on the back burner sometimes if we don't, you know, and so we knew the girls were going to be pretty good. And so when we won the championship, it was all like, well, the girls, they got a chance to win it now, so it would be nice if the men's and the women's won it. And so we was all up on the bus watching the game that night. You know, we was rooting for them and everything, and it was just amazing. Uh, it, was, it was awesome, man. And, and, and Phil, uh, Phil is such a – he's one of my favorite coaches. He's one of my favorite people yeah. on campus. Whenever I see Phil, I just, I mean, I just, I can't do anything but shake his hand, ask him how he's doing, and, and wish him the best of luck because he is a great guy. And, right. and to see him, and to finally see him have the success as a coach yeah. uh, to, to get that, I mean, that's, that's, that's amazing. What, as a coach, what, is it fun playing for a coach like Phil? Of course, man. I've had, I've been blessed to have really good coaches in my life and in my past experiences, and all of them have been humble. But Phil, he's the most humblest. Like, I mean, he, he really, watch his film and I mean it'll be times that he don't go out and eat with us because he's at to studying the other team and watching film to see what we need to do see what we got to be done and the coaching staff here at Troy is just amazing I mean it's one of the best that I play for and the way they attack weight with the way they approach us towards games no matter who we playing or how we playing it they like the film the preparedness you know practice is it's always a one-on-one -on -one type thing getting better every day so I mean that's that's where it starts at if we see it, if we see it in the coaches and that they're are sincere about what they're doing then we it comes into us and we want to you know push ourselves to be helpful towards them too. And uh, you guys get to the tournament, you, you find out you're taking on Duke. Just that, the surrealness of being in the NCAA tournament, just what was, what was that like? <laughs> oh, man, it was crazy. I was like, cause it's, I mean, it's something every basketball player, like, if you play basketball, you'd be like, oh, I want to go play in the tournament, or I want to play, go play against this person or that person. But to play against Duke, I mean, that was, it, was, it was big. I mean, when we got there, it was like, when we saw it on the screen, it was like, we played Duke, everybody was like, yeah, yeah, you know, we can beat them. You know, we wasn't scared of them or nothing like that. But it was just so surreal. And then when we got there and we had the, open practice with the media. I mean, it was, it was just amazing. We met Chris Weber, took some pictures, talked with him and everything, and it was just amazing. And then uh, you, this is actually your first year, is this your first year at Troy, you right. transfer in? Right. And then, um, I mean, just uh, to hear your name 
uh, Division One. When you score, when you when you shoot when you shoot a three pointer and you make the three pointer and then you hear the or you you know you scoring inside you score and you hear your name Juan Davis Jr. over the, the loudspeaker. I mean, what does that mean to you uh, to to realize that you you made it to Division One level basketball? I mean, it's all just a blessing just to know where I came from. I just want to thank God for giving me the opportunity to play, and just the journey that I've come. From, I come from a long, long journey, so to be here right now playing Division One basketball, I mean, many people say that I wouldn't do it, so just to be here doing it, and every time I hear that, it's just confidence, and it's just like a, a reminder that, yeah, you're here, you're doing this, and that, you know, you were, you were playing this opportunity, and just, you got to take advantage of it. And then uh, growing up in Mississippi, mm -hmm. um, you talk about a lot of people doubted you. Was that something that growing up, you know, always, always been doubted, or is it something that started like when you got to high school? I mean... For me, I played soccer for about eight years. So I wasn't even, I wasn't even focused on basketball. But I had an older sister that I played against, and she would always beat me. So I was like, I got to find a way to beat her. So I used to go outside. I didn't love basketball like that, but I would try to find ways to beat her. And so when I finally started beating her, I magically grew out of nowhere. And so I actually tried out for the basketball team when I was younger, about seventh or eighth grade. And I didn't make it, but one of the guys I made didn't have the grades. And so they got me on the team because I had the grades. And, but I wasn't. I mean, you would have people in the stand talking about something, get the ball out of his hands. Or, I mean, I remember even going out and shooting a layup and missing the whole goal. I mean, it was just like that. But, like, towards later on in high school, I hit a growth spurt. I hit one from about six foot to six five. And so I hit that growth spurt, and I started, you know, developing more. And then everything just kind of changed and did a whole circle. And so, I mean, just when I played high school, I went on to junior college, and now I'm here. So it's just a blessing. Man. That's awesome, man. And then uh, you, the growth spurt definitely helps. So right. <laughs> when you were playing soccer, uh, what position in the field did you play? I was a forward. a forward. Forward and goalie, yeah. Oh, well, I guess it would have helped to be 6'5 <laughs> at the time when you were playing soccer. Right. You were a 6'5 goalie. Um, and then just, I mean, how did your love for, for soccer grow? Did your dad, did your parents play soccer? Just No, nah, it know? just, I mean, to be honest, it just came, I just loved to run. My dad wanted me to play baseball, and he had bought me tons of bats and balls and shoes and gloves, but I even never used any of them because the game was just too slow for me. I love to run and I, didn't be, I, didn't, I couldn't be in one place just like standing there the whole time. And so I played soccer, I got a chance to run, and I developed a love for it, you know. But my whole family is basketball, so I was running all my life. So I had no choice basically once I hit the growth spurt. <laughs> and then uh, how did soccer help you when, you when you shifted towards basketball? Oh, it helped a lot with wind purposes, like you run all the time in the cold. So, I mean, that's, that's really a good conditioning wise and then footwork. You know, perseverance. I mean, you you see challenges in soccer that you don't see in basketball, such as the weather and you know, playing against people that's always running and always constant moving. So it, it's a it's a good it ties in good with basketball and helped me a lot. And then uh, let's kind of like take a breather from from actively being in sports <laughs> to, to kind of like talking about it. I mean, what's the atmosphere? What's the most? I guess uh, what's one of the better parts of, of being part of the team? What do you guys like to do? Like hanging out yeah. when when you're not on the court, always doing basketball stuff. Oh, I mean, these, this group of guys here, I mean, it's, it's one of the best groups I've been around and played for. I mean, these guys are so lively. You know, it's not, the, it's not where we see each other at practice and we go home and we don't see each other ever again. We stay in an apartment and we have three below us, Devon, Aaron, and uh, Renato is below us. And then you have me, Tat, and Kevin. And then you have BJ and Jeremy and Peace. And so we're right in the middle. So we all hang out just about every night. Everybody just comes to our apartment. We play music, talk, joke, you know, play cards. I mean, it's just fun. We just team bonded, and I think that's really what, one of the things that helped us, you know, when the championship was that bond that we had and the, uh, chemistry, the chemistry that we built with each other from there. Now, Jordan said that y'all get together and y'all play 2K, but he yeah. says he don't play 2K, he plays Madden. Yeah. Juan, when you hop on the sticks, you play 2K <laughs> or Madden? But I really don't play video games like that, but, I mean, I, I play 2K. I have a little brother, and I think the 2K that I played was when the Xbox 360 was out, and he always beat me, so I just gave it up. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> he, I mean, it was, it was no point, but I mean, I just sit back and watch and like, I enjoy watching them, you know, they always fussing and, and, you know, just talking and stuff and getting at each other, and it's like they're actually playing one-on-one, -on -one, like, real, in the real game, and they're just playing a video game, so it's fun to watch. Yeah, then uh, you should probably throw some FIFA in there. I bet if you throw FIFA in there, you you, you run the sticks. <laughs> yeah, I probably, I probably would. I probably would. <laughs> and then, um, uh, just music. I mean, music choices. What do you like to? What do you like to listen to? Uh, what, what gets you in the? What gets you in the mood? What gets you pumped before a game? Uh, I had to say gospel. I like to listen to like. I mean, I'm different, so I had to hear like this slow, inspirational like gospel music. So it gets my mind. It 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 totally like takes my mind from like the hype and more focus in my mind to like what I'm about to do, and it gives me like the inspiration to do what I got to do. So I mean, it's, gospel is, is the one that's been doing it for me. Then final question: favorite social media platform to use? Uh uh, it's, it's, I had this, it's, it's a, it's a tie between Facebook and Instagram and Facebook just because I have like so many family people that follow me there and I have people like from school that follow me. So 
Instagram too, but I mean, I had to probably say Facebook because uh, my family get to see what I'm doing, they get to be involved too. And it's, it's really a platform for me. But I mean, all social media, I just like to, you know what I'm saying, present myself and represent Troy University well and whatever I post and whatever I do. So let right. my family know. Yeah, man, I hear you. I hear you on that one. Thanks again, Juan. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining me, us, man. man. Juan Davis, family man, great teammate, <laughs> great player, Troy University basketball. Look out for him coming next fall. And thank you for joining us here on today's uh, interview segment. And stick around for more Trojan Sports Now coming your way.